Hello, and welcome to This Is My Code. My name is Derek, and I'm here today with Brian from OST. Welcome, Brian. Thanks, Derek. Happy to be here. Uh, so I understand OST is an advanced consulting partner with AWS, and you guys specialize in helping customers implement solutions using AWS and IoT. That's correct. Um, we've actually built a code accelerator that we use in a lot of our projects, and we're going to be looking at some of that code today. Very cool. So I see we've got some example uh, code here. Uh, and if I understand correctly, uh, this code's running inside of a customer's Lambda function, and it's uh, focused on the uh, authentication and authorization of a client that wants to connect to the MQTT broker? That's correct. It's servicing a request from something like a web browser or a mobile application that's interested in connecting to the MQTT broker in order to interact um, with the IoT devices that are also connected. Very cool. So I see here that you've got sort of three main uh, calls that are happening here. Sort of build the policy, generate the credentials with the policy, uh, and then finally sign a URL. Could you That's walk right. us through uh, what the code's doing here? Sure, I'd be happy to. So the first step here, build policy. Um, that's generating a custom IAM policy that relates this user to this user's things. That is the, the association between the user and, for example, if they purchased a smart light bulb. Mm -hmm. um, it's the relationship between those two. Mm -hmm. uh, and it defines that in, in terms of IAM. And on the back end, uh, how do you know which uh, users are authorized to access what, which things? What, what's the data store there? In this case, we're using DynamoDB to, to map the user to the things that they own. Ah, very cool. So in that case, you can use uh, the functionality in DynamoDB to really have row-based row access control uh, and have a, a row for who's uh, every user and what they're allowed to do. Yep. Very cool. That's right. Cool. So you've created an IAM policy that describes uh, what the customer or what the user is allowed to do. What happens next? So step two is to generate credentials. Um, we're passing in both the user and the pol generated policy document in that function call. And that's going to generate um, a dynamic set of AWS credentials that can be used in step three, um, which is the function that's actually si um, generating a signature that we can attach to the WebSocket URL um, using the uh, SIGV4 signing algorithm. Got it. Uh, and so this is a, the end product here is going to be a signed WebSocket URL. That's correct. Uh, and that's going to point this, um, this user, this client, uh, to the MQTT broker. Um, and, and it's going to also include um, uh, the permissions on, on what the user is allowed to do. Is that right? Yeah. And actually, let's take a closer look at that generate credentials function. Great. Because um, that's kind of the linchpin of, of the logic here. So. Uh, if you notice, we're passing in the policy document into this function. Um, but really, all this is doing is wrapping a call to STS assume role here. This call allows us to generate a set of AWS credentials against the, this specific policy document. So we're stringifying it here to escape all of the quotes and um, other syntax inside the IAM document, mm -hmm. and then it's included as a parameter to that call. So the credentials that come back um, allow the, use, the owner of those credentials to do all of the things in that policy document, but only those things in the, uh, the things that are in the policy document. Got it. So uh, we've, at this point, we've authenticated the user, so we know who they are. Uh, we've looked up uh, what the user is allowed to do and created an IAM policy document. Mm -hmm. uh, and now um, we've turned that. Um, uh, into the credentials that are needed here mm -hmm. uh, so that you can go and sign the URL and hand that back to the client. That's right. Um, so the client can take that URL, connect to that over, to it over WebSockets, mm -hmm. uh, and then the IoT core service handles validation of that signature um, communicating uh, in the back end back to STS. Got it, got it. So that's built in. You don't have to worry about the authentication piece exactly. on the other side. Exactly. Great. So let me just ask one more question. If I'm a developer that's just getting started using IoT on AWS, mm -hmm. uh, and I've got sort of a dev test environment, at what point should I start thinking about implementing this more fine-grained access control? Good question. So at the beginning of a project, usually you're just interested in trying to connect your device at all, and mm -hmm. then and manage communication, define messaging structures, and define MQTT topics 
between your digital experience, your, your mobile app or your browser, mm -hmm. and the things themselves. So you don't necessarily need to go to this level at the beginning. Um, you could use configured credentials that have a little bit wider access. But certainly as you approach production, you want to bring something dy dynamic um, into the picture so that you don't get crosstalk where uh, one user is allowed to either listen to or communicate with the devices uh, that are owned by someone else. Yeah, definitely want to get that right before you go to production. <laughs> exactly. Great. Uh, well, thanks so much for sharing your code with us today. Yeah, happy to be here. Thank you. And thanks for watching. This is my code.